Okay, now I'm going to show you about one of the more unique functions of the gauge. This is our min, max, and our delta function. This gives us the ability to lock on high, low points, find the difference between the two. We have the capabilities of capturing, say, a TIR flatness, like a parallelism to the plate. Also, run out of a round part. Let me show you how we can do that with this gauge. The number five key showing a little sine wave with two arrows pointing at the top and the bottom of the sine wave. That's our min-max delta function. When you hit that button the first time, up at the top of the display, that sine wave appears with an arrow pointing at the bottom of the sine wave. That's looking for our minimum function. That's going to find the minimum value as we tram a probe across a, across a part. If you hit that button again, that's our maximum function. That's going to lock on the highest point as we tram a probe tram a probe across the part. And the final, the third and final time is giving us both arrows on the top and the bottom of the sine wave. This is giving us our delta reading, the difference between the high and the low point. So let's put that into use and measure our part and we'll see how this actually works. I'm going to call up a minimum value. As I turn my part sideways, I've got a little bit I've got a little feature that has like a wave to it. So we can lock on a low point and lock on a high point, and we can capture, say, a wall thickness relative to the bottom of the part. If you remember from our reference videos, we've established a zero to the plate in our reference one. So I'm on reference one, measuring in inches, and I'm looking for a minimum reading. What I'm going to do is I'm going to eyeball the center, the low, what, I, what appears to be the lowest point in this feature, and then I'm going to set myself slightly to the side of it. As I'm slightly to the side of it, I will engage the probe, and when I engage the probe, you'll notice this top number is always going to be a live indicator wherever the probe is, high or low, it doesn't matter, it's going to give you the current position of the probe. Once I engage the probe, this bottom set of numbers, it's going to follow those values. When it follows those values, it will then lock on the lowest point it finds. So as I sweep down and up, it's going to freeze on our reversal point. It's the same way you would use a test indicator and watch the needle go back and forth, but this is going to do it for us automatically and much faster. So if I engage the probe and then sweep my part through, you'll see my numbers are, gr are, are getting lower and lower. And then as I pass the bottom point, my numbers are now starting to go higher, but I've locked on that minimum value. So the minimum value in that little valley is 343 thousandths. That's a great way to capture a wall thickness in, the, in a low feature, in a minimum value. Same way if we do maximum. Now my arrow is pointing at the top, we're going to lock on the high point of this. So again, I'll set myself slightly off-center from the peak. I'm going to engage my probe, and now I'm going to travel up that peak, and as we grow, our numbers are getting larger, and now my numbers are getting smaller again on that top value, so we've locked in our highest point. So on that peak there, we have a value of 371 thousandths wall thickness. This min-max function is great for stuff like capturing, capturing that low point and that high point on a unique shape feature. It's also great if you want to have a measurement from a land on your part to the minimum or maximum value of a diameter. Or if you want to measure from the min to the min of a diameter or max of the max of a diameter. So we can lock on those high points or lock on those low points and get a measurement relative you know, to whatever that datum is set on the print. So now we're going to look at the delta function. The delta function, again, is the number five key when the sine wave has arrows pointing on both the top and the bottom. As you see here on my display, the delta function is engaged and ready to go. So if I drive to the top of a part, I have the ability to tram my probe across that part and capture the low point, the high point, as well as the delta, the difference between the two, giving us a TIR flatness, like a parallelism. 
So as I engage my part, I can engage it and tram it anywhere I like. From there you can see we have a result of 8 tenths. 8 tenths flatness parallelism on the top of the face of this part. If you wanted to know the minimum point that we've trammed, the maximum point we can tram, while the probe is still engaged we can toggle, say the minimum value is this value here, the maximum value is that value, and then you can kind of see where our 8 tenths value comes from. And again, this number on the top is giving you the current position of the probe, wherever the probe is, whenever we're in this function. Another great feature to measure is runout. Runout of your round parts, your turn parts. With this same function, the same delta function, we're able to do that. So if I come over here to my pin and I want to check the runout of my pin, I can engage my probe turn my part, you may have a concentricity gauge to roll your part, or you may just have a simple V-block like we have here today. If I engage my probe, and I'll just step aside and turn my part, as you achieve a 360 degree rotation, you'll notice we have a 2 tenths run out. So that's how you'd be able to achieve your TIR flatness, parallelism, and or your run out of your round parts with the delta function.